What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. <laughs> We're getting close to sticking everything back together again, which is really, really cool. Um, and a couple of deliveries. I've got a, um, the first bit of new tooling, but it's uh, International 40 um, collet chuck. It holds the R32 collets, because um, then the, they, I've got some collet blocks that you can stick in a vise in that as well, so I can reuse the collets. And that'll all be fine. So I'll be taking this into work along with the spindle, because that way uh, Brett can start machining up the, the dogs to sit in here and the taper to go in the end and whatnot. So that'll all be sweet. Hopefully this will get done this week. Um, and then I can get all the head unit back together again once it's painted. So they're going in. He also watched the last video and he saw me copying about with this thing. <laughs> the prop shaft has been all de-rusted and everything else. It's a lot better in there but it's not smooth um, yeah I've got a lot of the swarf out and all the sharp edges and all that sort of stuff it's still in shifting I've had it in the vice overnight with light machine all down that's all dribbled out the bottom because there's nothing left in it look <laughs> but the bugger still ain't moving um, so he gave me a shout going bring that prop shaft in I'll get the bugger apart so that's what I'm doing <laughs> He's got like a big old rosebud torch. I'm thinking heat is going to be the way to go. Either heat or a press and an attitude. But either way, we'll get it done. Um, I can always drive this pin out of the bottom and take the, you know, take the um, joint off, shove it in a press and give it large. That may be the way to do it, actually. But anyway, so all that was going in. I've also got um, some of these jobbies. Yeah. Uh, where are you? There you go. Hammer drive rivets. Very weird little things actually. Um, made of brass. It's like a, um, a real short rivet, but it's got a screw thread to it. So as you knock them in, obviously the brass is going to deform because it's softer than what I'm boshing it into. And it'll sort of twist its way in. And these get, well, I mean, they're brilliant. They don't want to come out once they're in. <laughs> they've got some nice shiny rivets for the paste, which still need to be cleaned up. Um, so anyway, I'll shove these in the van so I don't forget them, but I'm making a start on a paint job. So I've got some masking tape, I'm just going to mask up all the stuff that I don't want to get paint on. Um, there's a couple of bits I do need to scotch by just to brighten up a little bit before I do all this. Uh, then we'll mask it up and then we'll start getting some of this paint on. Um, this is the same stuff that I used on Chuck Norris. It's just, you know, it's machinery paint basically. Um, suitable for marine, vehicle, metalworking, machinery, concrete floors and decking. <laughs> so pretty much everything. Um, you can thin it down with white spirit apparently. So I've got some of that as well, just in case, because as I recall, it was a little bit thick going on. But we're going to get to that as well, and this is going to get cleaned up. Um, but I do want to get it masked up and everything first. So that's what I'm up to today. Right. Let's put these in the bag, because I will forget them. There's a few little bits and pieces like this that I want to try and brighten up just a little bit. Um, they're not going to get painted, um, and they're staying in situ whilst it does get painted, but you know, it's got like the vernier mark, it's a zero mark for the vernier. Um, the thing is, if I don't do it now and get this surface schmutz off, um, it's going to be a pain to do it when everything else is painted because I'll just end up taking paint off where I don't want to. So they're having a quick brush it up. Um, the mating surfaces and stuff, they're going to get stoned. Um, but I'm probably going to do that once it's all been painted, I think. Because then I can just go over it all, like this front bit, and there's little ridges and stuff in it. And it's still got some of that um, sealant stuff on it. That red goo that was there before. Um, so I want to get rid of all that. Hylomar has turned up as well. Um, that's going to be what I use to seal everything. 
Um, I know they wouldn't have used it back in the day, but it will do the job. with the masking at all. Um, most of the stuff I can just paint up to. That's not a problem. Well, you know, I'll come up to you and then just stop. Um, it's just where there's two surfaces that join, basically. Um, this is not going to be a pristine paint job. I'll tell you that now. For a couple of very good reasons. One, this is rough. It's a casting and I'm not smoothing it all out to get the showroom shy. Um, and two, I'm doing it with a brush. <laughs> Most of these nuts and bolts and stuff are just going to get painted over. I don't really care. Unless I have to service it, then they'll come off. And if I have to, I'll just slap another coat of paint on it. It's going to be a working machine, end of the day. So I think I've got everything though. Um, yeah, is it the shaft and the gear shift? Right. Um, I have just gone over with the flappy wheel thing, you know, the ang angle grinder, just where I was taking some of these badges out and the little hammer driver of it snapped off. It was a bit sticking out. So I've just flatted them off, they ain't going anywhere. Um, I think we're pretty much good to go. I think, well, all this surface, uh, I'll just paint up to it, that'll be fine. It's going to get stained off after anyway, so that'll be all right. Um, I did have all the oil lines out. Basically, it was just goo in the end. It, what it's, it's, there's nothing in the tubes. You can blow them through. And I've squirted some oil down it and it all goes through and everything else. And it comes out of back, which is sweet. Um, so I think we're gonna be all right there. That'd be, oh, I need to bung some tape in that oil from my tap. Um, even that or a bolt. Right, let's make some paint up. the first coat done it's literally just a scrub coat you know just working it into all the little nooks and crannies it looks horrible <laughs> it's patchy as anything if we get a second coat on it it should look all right um have i stayed in the lines mm. mostly <laughs> i don't think his uh, his lordship is going to agree that i'm a sign writer or anything but that'll do as a first coat um what's the time oh, bugger I need to go. I'll be back tomorrow. I think the white spirit ate through my pot because it's leaking. <laughs> um, today is now Wednesday. So I've got a couple of hours in here and then I've got to go to my work. But yesterday we had a little bit of success. Look at that. <laughs> this is the prop shaft. So I've had this, I mean, everything has happened to this. It, is, it was rusty. 
So it's gone through the de-rusting tank with that deoxy stuff. Um, we'll more of that in a minute. Um, it's had WD-40 down the end of it. It's had petrol down the end of it. It's had oil down the end of it. It's had everything down the end of it. And it still weren't shifted. I've heated the bugger up a couple of times. That didn't work. So anyway, I've had it sitting in a uh, in a bucket with like a 50-50 mix of petrol and diesel. You know, um, just so I can lay it down and it can all get in there and stuff. I took it into work when I dropped the spindle and the, um, the tooling off to Brett for him to machine them. Um, and he's had a go with a very large hammer and a drift and boshed it out basically. But the petrol and diesel stuff was starting to work because where the the prop shaft came out the casing, it was wet all the way along, so it had started to get through. I thought he was going to heat it up with his rosebud torch and then have a go in the press, but no, he just bashed it. <laughs> um, the, there is still a bit of smudge and smear and stuff in here which I need to get out, so it is going to go through the ultrasonic again, just because you know it's going to get to everything now. Um, but the stuff that is that is in the, the channel is just dried on grease and goo that's like decades old. Um, so clean that up and I've got a working prop shaft, which is the original one, and not a remade one by me, which I'm quite happy with. That bit will get painted, that bit won't. That'd be alright, won't it? So anyway, the, the uh, ultrasonic's warming up and this will just get chucked in there and left. Um, I have another delivery. Uh, which is this. So the boring head's turned up. Um, I'm now just waiting on the drill chuck and what else was there? Drill chuck and something. I can't remember what the other thing was now. It could even just be a drill chuck. Um, but yeah, it's a boring head. So I can reuse all my old tooling, that all fits, which is cool. So we're in there. Um, well, like I say, I've got a couple of hours left today. Um, so I'm going to carry on doing some of this stuff. It is looking quite good. Another coat of paint, I think, and it's going to really start looking the part. I need to paint some of those bits and doodads as well. Right, okay. It do not look bad, does it? Well, I mean, it does, but it's not going to. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? I think two coats is going to do it. This is covering quite well, actually. Yeah, it's not a pristine job. It's never going to be. Um, but it is going to be a bit more respectable than it was. That's for sure. Uh, if there is the odd patch, do I care? No, not really. Um, but I think this is going to be all right. There was somebody who commented, um, I think it's brilliant. <laughs> I commented saying, I wonder if there's a Plymouth based YouTube channel all to do with carpet cleaning. And there's a woman on it going, can you hear Mr. Man in his workshop giggling like a loon again? <laughs> I never thought of that. I'm going to have to go and look and see if there is one. Right, I've got to say it does look better for having had a second coat does look an awful lot better. I have got a couple of dribbles on it, as you can see. <laughs> but you know, it's painting. I'm not very good at it. Anyway, um, Kev, why or we, W-Y-E, um, he came up with a blinding idea. He said, how about putting a, um, a sheet of Perspex on this? You know, drill it, seal it, bolt it down. And that way, when you turn it over, for the first time with oil in it and everything else, you can make sure the oil's pumping around and see how it's actually going to lubricate itself, which I really like the idea. I might do one down there as well. Um, I'm not really sure on the level to fill it to, um, but you know, we'll, we'll work it out. Being able to see what's actually going on inside would be a big help in doing that, but it does look good. So anyway, that's all going to be dry tomorrow. In other news, um, in the ultrasonic, I've got the prop shaft, so that's going through the goo, which I do need to change because it's minging. I'm just trying to shift all the stuff from inside the casing and get it all cleaned up properly. Um, so I'll have that solution out, put some fresh stuff in and set it going again. Um, what else have I been doing? Oh yeah, 
I've been painting other bits. I thought I'd save you the paint montage because it's just me with a paintbrush giving it large. Um, this lot has had its first coat, so, you know, handle, sight glass, all that sort of stuff. I still need to do these two bits, which go on the end of the bed, which is still sitting over there. Um, but as you can see, I still don't have much bench space. <laughs> I need to get this done so I could do bike stuff. I still got some covers there and there um, behind the white spirit, which still needs to be painting, but you know, it will get done. Um, don't know how long Brett's going to take to do the spindle, but once he has all this lot here, can go back together. And tomorrow, that will be dry so I can have at it. Um, today's Wednesday, I'm off on Thursday, so I'm in here all day, um, which is gonna be good. So I'm hoping to get a good chunk of this done. Um, essentially, I just wanna get all this lot back on that, so I can have my bench back. Um, I'm not too worried about getting the power to it all sorted just yet. Um, I just want to get it assembled and mechanically sound so that way whenever Jamie's free, um, he can come down and get it sorted. We've got the motor over there, so that's fine. Um, you know, it's just, I need to get it done. So we're having at it properly again tomorrow. Anyway, I need to disappear because the other half have sat on the glasses and broken them at work. So I need to take a spare set and we'll be back tomorrow. Right, it is now Thursday morning. I'm covered in paint again. <laughs> I spared you this bit, but I've just gone over like the hand wheels and all that, the side glass and whatnot, just give it a second coat. So that's coming up all right. Um, it has just been dogged on. There's gonna be a couple of runs, I'm sure, because it was done with a brush, but it'll be fine. It'll be covered in oil and stuff. You're never gonna know. <laughs> um, I did have a delivery this morning, which is cool. Look at this, uh, Keyless Chuck. Can you see that? Yeah, Keyless Chuck, International 40 Taper. Jobs are good. And I do like these. They are, I'm forever losing Chuck keys. I have to shove the Chuck key in the Chuck or I know it's gonna go missing. But anyway, so I've got that. That's the last main, well, I say last main. There's gonna be other tool in the stuff that I wanna get. Oh, white spirit. Yeah. Um, so I, when, I, when I sold off the, the little mill, um, the little rotary table went with it, that was dead handy. Um, I am going to end up getting another one, but on a bed that size I can quite easily stick like an 8 inch one, um, which would be a damn sight more useful. Um, I ain't going to get it yet because there's no point because I don't need it. Um, I'm only going to get the tool in as and when I need it because otherwise it's just money sitting around doing nothing when I could be spending that money on something else. So that's what's happening. Um, I've still got a few bits and pieces to clean up and paint. Do I keep touching your face when you've got white spirit on your hands? Um, but today, this is good. I want all this cleaned up and sorted so I can shove it back on the machine. Um, the machine, all the paint's dry, it looks really good actually. There's probably like a couple of patches, but you know, it's, it, it does look good. So we'll have the masking off that at some point. Um, but here and now I want to get this clean. So I need a big old bucket for fuel and it's getting scrubbed. <laughs>
So I've had all the masking tape off. Uh, just topping this up with the wall. Haven't done it in a while. All I'm doing is stoning down these surfaces because they've still got some schmoo and smuts on. So I just want to make sure there's no high spots or anything. When you come to sealing it all up again. I know this one's terribly critical, it's just the top cap and stuff, but if I'm doing it, I'm doing it for all of them. Oh, that's alright. Right, let's make sure there's no burrs or anything. That's it, I'm just going around it all doing that basically. Anything that um, has a plate on it is going to get stained. I want to try and get all this red schmoo off. I don't know what it is, some sort of sealant. Um, I am going to be using Hylomar just because I've got it. <laughs> um, and it will do the job, it'll be fine. Um, but if there's any high spots or burrs or nicks or dinks or any of that sort of stuff, I just want to get rid of them just so we you know we can make it as all tight as possible basically. So that is what's happening. Why right. would it go up and down? See that's gonna do my head in. Today's interruption is a tree felling fern. You hear it in the background. They go and cut down all these trees and everything else. And then bring them back here and turn them into logs. With a big big log splitting thing that they've got, it's got its own power plant. So that's what you can hear in the background. But it does make a nice change to a power washer. <laughs> Um, just putting the gibbs back in, everything is just getting swamped in oil. Um, all the oil lines are free and everything else, so that's fine. Um, but whilst I'm assembling it, it's the ideal time to get loads of oil into it anyway. Um, all the nuts and bolts have gone through the degreasing bath. Um, so the threads and everything else, is, yeah, everything is just getting covered basically. Because um, I don't want any moisture getting trapped in there. Ooh, hello. <laughs> I don't want any moisture getting trapped in there and rusting over time. Um, got washers on the, the bolts as well, didn't have them before but it's getting them now. Um, I'll get through gallons of this. <laughs>
Right, progress. Stuff is going back on. Look at that, look. Um, I've got my Gibbs all in down here. I still need to adjust the Gibbs for the Z. Um, however, in order to do that, I really need to have a handle on it, which I can't put back on because it's still wet. Um, so the Gibbs do need to be sorted. I'm annoyed that my flaming tap isn't going straight up and down. I shoved a copper washer behind it um, just to you know get a good seal on it and everything else. Um, to be fair, when I got it, the tap was on upside down anyway, so I suppose that is an improvement, but if it's not a right angle, it's a wrong angle. <laughs> At least it points to town now. Um, everything has been drenched in oil, and I mean drenched. I've been painting it on. Every inch of that is covered, top and bottom, inside and out. <laughs> um, just, it needs it, basically. Um, all the bed was oiled up and everything else before it went on. Gibbs on both sides got done too. It is literally dripping. Um, I'll obviously wipe the excess off it, but for assembly purposes, I want everything swimming in the stuff, basically. Um, stone, ooh, yeah, stoned all this lot down so it's all nice and flat. Um, same with the surfaces up here. And again, for the side glass, I've also uh, done the side covers, so they're all nice and flat, so we should get a good seal on there. I squirted some more oil onto the gears, just because I had the oil can in my hand. <laughs> but look, I've got a bit of bench space. A little bit, not a lot, but a little bit. Um, I still need to sort out the inside of this. I don't know, can, you might be able to see. Uh, where are you? See, there's still smudge and smear and stuff going on in there. Um, so all I'm gonna do is get um, a piece of rod, I'll slit the end of it, shove some emery cloth in it, stick it in a drill chuck, and then wind it in and out of the shaft. So that'll be fine, that'll clean it all up. This lot is still waiting for Brett because he's got a machine spindle, but all that will be going back in as soon as that's done. Um, as far as the sight glass goes, I've got, um, we're going plastic, not glass. Um, trying to find glass of the right dimension was just a nightmare. So I've got some plastic stuff coming that should do the trick. And then all the rest of it is um, still drying. It's, I mean, you can touch it, it's, but it's still tacky. So I can't stick the handle for the knee back onto the machine and sort my Gibbs and stuff out until this is all dried off properly uh, and I can handle it without, you know, monkeying it up or anything else. Um, covers is down here, they've been painted, they've only had one coat, they will get another coat before I go. Um, and obviously the bed is still over there. But, I'm starting to get my bench back clear. How good is that? I am quite pleased with progress, it has to be said. However, it's only two o'clock. <laughs> I've still got an awful lot of my day left off. But I can't do anything because I'm waiting for paint to dry. <laughs> And I'm not going to sit here and watch it. Um, basically, I've got the... I don't know what it's... On, if it was on a lathe, it'd be either the apron or the saddle. I don't know what it is, but it's that big old assembly that does X and Y. Um, you know, that's all back on, and the thing is absolutely dripping with oil. Every inch of it has been painted, and for good reason. Um, it all got... Uh, degrease with petrol uh, and then I've gone over it with like concentrated degreaser you know that I use in the pass washers and everything just to really clean it up and get all the smudge and smooth and stuff off I left it out in the sunshine just to dry and when I brought it in to oil it up you could see bits of it starting to sort of discolour and stuff so that's why the whole thing has been absolutely covered in oil I have painted it on literally it is dripping all my paintwork looks nasty as now. <laughs> it's all got streaks down it. Um, but I've done it for good reason. Um, yes, there are oil galleries and everything else in there, but they only get to certain bits of it, and I don't know when I'm going to be back in there again. The outside of it, for example, ain't going to get painted. Um, but covering it in oil, that'll, that'll protect it from flash rusting and stuff. Um, but like I said, I don't know when I'm going to be back in there again. I'm going... You know, I don't know when it's going to be dismantled and, you know, everything else. Um, 
So I figured, you know, for assembly purposes, whilst it's all in pieces, just cover the whole damn thing in oil. And that way you ain't got to worry about it. I can wipe the excess off. I've got loads of t-shirts. Well, I did have loads of t-shirts. <laughs> I've used quite a lot of them now. Um, but at least that way the thing's going to be protected and it's, you know, it's going to last, last me a bit longer and, you know, serve me a bit better, I suppose. So that's it. So anyway, what's the plan? Uh, well, I'm... Like I'm saying, I'm off today, but I am working tomorrow, but I can come in in the morning, so that'll be all right. All this lot should be dried, so that way I can stick the hand back on for the knee, and I can set my gibs up for that. I can shove the lead screw in for the Y travel, and I can set the gibs up for that as well. I might even get the bed on and put the main lead screw in. I don't know. I do want to get that whole bit assembled, although I'm not looking forward to lifting the bed, because that was really heavy. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can get that whole thing assembled and you know oiled up and blah 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 mechanically it's pretty much there really I mean certainly as far as the you know X, Y and Z goes it's all done um, so that would be quite good I can make sure all the locks and everything else work and all that sort of stuff um, the covers will be painted um, I've, I've, it's still tacky and stuff, so they're going to get painted tomorrow. Um, and then once I stick, you know, once they're all ready to go on, I can fill it full of oil, um, shove them on with the Hylomar that I've got, and jobs are good. Um, a little bit of advice, again, if I may. <laughs> on the lathe, I use this stuff, light machine oil from Westway Lubricants. Can you see that? Hopefully. Well, anyway. Um, I was I was chatting with Brett and we was looking at the um, the like the you know the uh, transmission on this thing and basically it looks like a gearbox. It does because it's gears. And... <laughs> he waves at me when he comes past now. <laughs> Anyway, we was looking at the dry trade and stuff on this, and it does just look like a gearbox. You know, it's, it's shafts with splines on and gears that move up and down and everything. It looks like a gear, but it is a gearbox. And I asked him the question, what oil should I be using? Because I've got this stuff, and I use this on the lathe for like the thread cutting gearbox and, you know, all the gears in the dry train on that, and it seems to work absolutely fine. It says on here, um, a mineral machine oil, rec it's ISO 32, light machine oil. A mineral machine oil recommended for use in enclosed and circulating systems, suitable for general machine lubrication uses. They're only stable, good oxidization resistance, wide temperature range, low carbon residue, excellent dim demulsibility. I don't know what that means, but it sounds important. And that's it. So to me, this would do it because I use it on the light and it's you know machine lubrication it says on it he did say gearbox oil and it's got me thinking I'm not really sure which one to use um, I'm going to get some more of this anyway because it works a treat on the lathe and I'll, I'll just get through quite a lot of it actually so I'm going to get some of that but if you've got an oil filled head on, on a mill that you're using what do you stick in it? I would love to know because I don't want to yeah, I, I don't want to risk causing any damage, basically. I mean, there's there's hardly any wear on this thing at all, and I don't want to use the wrong oil and, and cause that to change. So, um, you know, a little bit of helpful advice would go a long way. I would really appreciate that. <laughs> so let me know. Um, as far as all the spindle goes, Brett's doing his thing on that. Hopefully it won't be too long. I can shuttle the head back together again. Um, we've already got the high the mark to stick the covers on. Once we decide what oil to use, I can shove that in, and then really it's just a case of wiring the motor up and mounting it. Um, I need to get an 8mm brooch because I need to turn a. I'm going to turn up like an alley collar and put a, a keyway in it, which needs to be 8mm both for the motor and for the shaft. Um, so I'll just do one collar, a couple of grub screws, key way that joins the whole lot and jobs are good. Um, and then I've just got to sort out some steel to do a mounting plate for it. And we're basically there. 
Um, but hopefully next couple of days my bench will basically be clear and I can get back on the bike. I don't really care if you know Jamie's not available to wire it in and the mill ain't working for a bit, but at least I know mechanically it's sorted. All the stuff is off the bench and I can get back on the bikes. That's what the plan is anyway. So I'm hoping this, this coming week that's gonna be the position that we're in. We just we yeah, we just have to wait and see, eh? Hey? Oh I haven't painted that yet either. Oh got the goo out of it. Right, that's where I'm leaving it today. Thank you ever so much for following this. Um, all the helpful comments that have been coming through and ideas and tips and all that sort of stuff. Really, really, really useful. Comments are always gold, but especially so when doing something like this. So keep them coming, because I'm cherishing some of that. That is really sweet. And I will see you on the next one. He's back again. He's back. Oh. Mate, with a bigger truck. He's unsociable, he didn't wait. <laughs> anyway, that's where I'm leaving it, and I will see you on the next one. Laters! <laughs>